I've created a NURBS curve with a CV curve tool, and the first and last points on the curve are snapped exactly to the Z axis. I want to select that curve and tap the space bar to go out to my four viewport layout so that I can show to you that the line is perfectly flat. If I dolly forward in my front and side views, you'll see that it's a perfectly flat line. I'm ready to add the revolve. So I've got my line selected. I'm in the Surfaces menu set, and I'll go to the Surfaces menu and choose Revolve Options. Importantly, I need to change the axis. It's set up to be around the Y axis. So if I tried to revolve this curve now, it would spin around the Y axis. But I need it to spin around the X axis. As you can see in the perspective view, the X axis is along this line. So that's the axis I want to revolve around. So I'll choose Axis Preset X. Let me open up this dialog a little bit. And I'm just going to output directly to Polygons. And I'll choose Tessellation Method General. With Quads Output. Click Revolve, and I don't see much at first, but as soon as I go to the attributes for this Revolve surface, I can now control its level of detail very precisely. So I'll hit Control A to open up the Attribute Editor, and I'm looking for a node called NURBS Tessellate 1. Tessellation just means tiling. And within this, I'll open up Advanced Tessellation Options and also general tessellation options. And I can increase the number of segments in either direction here. I'll go over to my perspective view, click in that view and press 5 so I can see shading. Go back to my NURBS tessellate node, play around with the number of segments. Now this doesn't need to be very detailed because there are going to be lots of these and they're going to be pretty small. I'd like to warn you about these type pulldowns. If you set the number up to a high number and then change the type, then you could actually crash your machine by overloading it with too much data. I would recommend that you bring the number way down, as low as you can go, before you change the type of tessellation. I can get better detail by changing these options up but I'm not really going for detail. So in fact, I'll just switch this back to what we had originally, which was per surface number of isoparms in 3D. That'll just give an even distribution to detail across that surface. So if I'm happy with that as my base model, I should probably also assign a material to it at this stage. So I'll right click and choose Assign New Material. And it'll just be a Lambert material. In the Attribute Editor, I'll immediately rename this, and I'll call it Butterfly Body Shader. Maybe I'll make the color darker, almost black. Close the Attribute Editor. I've still got a curve in my scene, so I don't want to be distracted by that. So you can see here, I've still got a NURBS curve. Get in really close, and I can actually click on it. Once I've got that curve selected, I can add it to a display layer. So in my channel box, display layer editor, I'll click create a new layer and assign selected objects. Double click to rename that. And I'll call it curve layer. Just to keep my scene clean. Click save. And I can hide that. Next, I need to make wings. So once again, I want to be in the top view. I'll click in that viewport to give it focus and tap the space bar to maximize the view. And I'll create butterfly wings. I only need to create one wing, and I can duplicate it to the other side of the body. So I'll just get set up here. I'll use the Alt and Middle Mouse button to move around in my viewport. And I'll go and choose Create CV Curve Tool once again. So I want to create sharp corners in some places, so I may need to click a few times in that location 
to create multiple control vertices, and that's how we get sharp corners on a NURBS curve. So here at the beginning, I'll click once and then twice, very slowly, to create two points at that location. Don't go too fast. If you double click, then Maya won't recognize your mouse clicks. I'll go out here and make a few more control points. If I want to have a sharp corner there, I'll pause for a moment and then click again to create a second point, and then pause and click a third time to make a sharp corner there. Same thing here, if I want a sharp corner, I'll click again to make a second point, and then a third one, pausing between each. One, two, three. When I get near the end, I don't actually want to click on that last point to close the curve. I'll stop just short of that and press the Enter key to complete the curve. Then, in the Surfaces menu set, with the curve selected, I'll choose Edit Curves, Open Close Curves. Now I've got a closed curve. I can right-click and go into Control Vertex and move these around with the Move tool, always staying in the top view so that I do not make a non-planar curve. The curve has to be perfectly flat, and the easiest way to do that is just to do all of your edits in the top viewport. So I've just taken a few moments to edit the shape of the curve. If I'm ready to create a surface from this, I want to get in really close in these corners and make sure there's nothing unusual going on there. Sometimes you might have points in locations that cause the curve to fold around on itself or loop through itself, and that's no good. So you can just turn on Snap to Points and then snap them to each other so that you won't have any loops. Go out here and check in on that as well. Snap to Points is still on. I'll just move those. If I don't do this, then I might risk getting those loops in there, which would cause my surface to be corrupt. Okay, so that looks pretty clean. I'll right-click and go back to Object Mode. Select the curve, and then from the Surfaces menu set, I want to choose Surfaces Planar. And now I see I've got a grid appearing over that. If I tap the space bar and go back out to my perspective view, you'll see there I've got a wing. So we've basically built the model. Next, we're going to do a little bit of animation on this butterfly. I'll go ahead and save what I have. File Save Scene As. Butterfly02.ma